Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This end of day report is for trading on Tuesday, January the 17th, 2017. Just a quick video uh, looking here at gold. Gold finally got to the first resistance level here. Uh, remember that, that 1200 to 1215 range, that's where we are right now. Uh, the market was able to get up to 1218.90 before pulling back a little bit. The next target is going to be up here around the 1235 range. Puts it well into mid-wage of the uh, mid midway into the Kumo cloud, and then uh, upper resistance is going to be around the 1260, 1270 level. And then from there, uh, we're off to the races to 1300. If the market can get that far without it being a target, I think it's going to start being targeted once it gets to around this. Uh, 1235 level and that's when I think the banks are going to come in and start selling like they did here and like they did here so still got a little ways that we can run yet but I'm not too excited yet until we're out of the woods and we're not out of the woods yet we're, we're all we did was um, basically come here get to the bottom of the Kumo cloud hitting that major resistance and it's going to have to overcome that or it's going to fall back down. We don't want to see a close below the momentum uh, level here. And if we can stay above that momentum level, then we're good to go. That momentum level is at 12.15.30. All right, that's, that is the, the momentum level of this, this up move. So if we can stay above uh, 12.15.30, we should be good to go. And we, sh we, we should be able to have enough momentum to bounce to another leg higher uh, in the gold futures. Let's take a look at silver now. All right, taking a look at silver, switching our focus there, you can see both of its uh, long-term and short-term trend line resistance levels are converging at its current level over, you know, that $17 level. So between 17 and 17.50, we'll say, is major resistance because that's the bottom of the Kumo cloud in silver. So silver is pretty much already there. Now, the, the question is, is, is it going to get sold up in here, too, with the spike run up to around 1750? Will that signal the bank selling? All right. That's what I'm looking at right here. Is it going to signal the bank selling? It's like we did last time. You got up. You got above that trend line there. Banks came in and sold it. Same thing here. Banks came in and sold it every time. So the question will be, is there enough buying support to take it to the next leg up? That's the good question. That's going to be $17.18 that we need to, to maintain closes above that because that's your momentum line. Closes below that shift from bullish to bearish instantly. All right, so we're right there. It's teetering right there where it needs where it needs to make it its mind up what it wants to do. All right, so we're we're definitely at a crossroads level. Um, let's see. Next, it's going to be around. I want to say sixteen. Let's call it sixteen fifty. All right, as long as we can close above 1650 in silver we should be good to go all right let's move on let's take a look at jnug all right taking a look here at jnug right now jnug is still not acting right as you can see here all right got up to the trend line and backed away all right got up to this resistance and backed away can it make a good run the 13 that's another major resistance and then here at the bottom of the kumo cloud at the 17 dollar level the 1750 those are our upward resistance levels that we have going forward we do not want to see a close below seven dollars and sixty cents uh we'll give it a we'll give it a 10 cent leeway we'll say 750 as long as we can stay have closes above 750 this should be good and we should be able to build the momentum and try to test these overhead resistance levels in the JNUG. Uh, let's see here. Looking at 
the GDXJ. Let's see if GDXJ supports that analysis. All right, GDXJ is already above its Kumo cloud and starting to get ready to ride the ramp. So this actually does um, show that there is some uh, support where we are in the JNUG. This is enough bullish of a signal to let us to alert us that this ramp that's coming up should help to catapult GDXJ toward its $50 target. All right? Then it needs to decide once it gets there, is it going to double top? Meaning, is it going to fail? Or is it going to be able to take out the $52.50 old high? That's where we are on GDXJ. So GDXJ is leading the way. GDXJ is looking like it wants to make a run for it to the upside. So that can be a good thing. Uh, let's see. Let's look at the dollar. All right. Looking at the dollar. The dollar is in jeopardy of closing and dropping below par. So far, it hit par 23, and that's where it pretty much is right now. Sitting right here on this trend line. All right. It has to stay above par. A close above par is dangerous because then that takes you down to the long-term uh, support of 97, 82 and a half. And then if it drops below that, it can, it's, it's just in free fall. So this is interesting because, again, we're looking at weekly charts. So this is the fourth week now in a row of down, down prices, selling. Selling off from the from the top of 103.81 and a half. All right, a quick uh, note here. Let's switch over to the Bitcoin just real quick. You can see it's trying to catch a lift here on on its weekly. So it's trying to divorce itself from the dollar. Will it be able to do it? It tried it back here and it failed miserably. Can it lead the way? Perhaps can it show signs of support? Or is it going to come back down here to this trend line and bounce higher? This is the $10,000 question. All right, moving on to crude oil real quick. Where are we here on the weekly chart? Hanging up here. It's really not giving up any, um, any support. It's staying above its support lines, which is very bullish. It wants to go to 55 it wants to go to 55. It's probably going to best that and go to 60. And you can see that, you know, it's well supported underneath of here. These supports have not been taken out. It's hanging out. They're actually separating and starting to lift higher. And that's where we are right now. So oil is still bullish. This bar that we saw last week with this price action, how it came down, basically ran some stops and then it reset itself. Now we're we're in it. We're still a little. If this was a daily bar, we'd say this is an inside day because you're not taking out anything. You're just trading within the range of this bar. But it's a weekly bar, so it's an inside week so far. And with the, with a shorted shorted uh, trading week, short you know four days instead of five, we probably don't won't see too much action. But just overall, it's setting itself up to run higher, and that's that's just how it's looking. All right, let's take a look at the Nasdaq 100. It is staying above 5,000. It's not closing below 5,000. It will not allow itself to do it. We haven't closed below 5,000 since the week of December the 26th. Since then, the market has managed to have consecutive closes above 5,000. All right, one week, two week, and now working on the third week. Can we get a close above 5,000 this week, even on a shortened week? All right, if we do, that's good, but then we're going to have to do it again next week just to solidify itself and stay above this momentum trend line. 5,000, notice how the momentum trend line is right at 5,000. It's right there at that 5,000 level. It wants to stay above that. we got to close above the momentum trend line in order for this thing to really get some legs and some life into it. If a trend's really going to develop, that's what we need to see. All right, not the wishy-washy when you close, but uh, 
close. You know, you come up here. You're, you're below it. You're you're above it. You're below it. You're above it. You're below it. You're below it. You're above it. You're above. It, you're above it. You, you you can't be waffling around sideways like we did here. From here to here, we just went sideways several weeks. Then it finally broke out. All right. So right now, though, this is a very healthy trend. All right. Ever since it took off from back here, from the week of June the 27th of 2016 to where we are now, it's a healthy bullish trend, and it has a lot of strength uh, underneath of it. So that's what we're watching for this week. So remember, bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back, and I will see you in the trading room. Come on over to postwavetrading.com, learn how to trade, learn how to make money in the markets, and hedge your physical portfolios as well. Peace.